Hey guys, this is the Chem 1 lecture on how to calculate molarity as well as dilutions. So yesterday we learned a way to quantify concentration by percent, but there was another way called molarity. And so if you think about lemonade that has a lot of solute, like even super saturated, really concentrated, 70% solute, like things we've already talked about, well, we could also say it has a molarity of 6 and then something that's a lot more diluted, so there's a lot more solvent than solute, because there's lots of water in there, say the concentration's about 0.5 molar. And so we're putting a number to quantify how concentrated or dilute a solution is. So we're first going to learn how to calculate molarity, and then later in the lesson we'll learn how to calculate the new molarity when you dilute something. So the main formula you need to know is that molarity, and it's a capital M, so not lowercase, meter is used by that, is calculated by moles of solute divided by liters of solution. So this kind of like our gas laws unit when we did our ideal gas law, it's very picky with units. So the solute has to be in moles and the solution has to be in liters. And so can you think of a time where we might not start you in moles? Like maybe we start you in grams and you have to use molar mass to first convert into moles. Or we give you milliliters and you first need to switch. There's a thousand milliliters in a liter. So really watch out for the units. And then once you're in there, you can just kind of plug and chug wherever you need to go. Okay, so like any math thing, let's label what we've been given. So it says, what is the molarity? So click we're going to calculate molarity. If 0.294 moles of solute, sodium nitrate, is dissolved in 0.4 liters of a solution. And so our new formula today is molarity is equal to moles over liters. And this one looks pretty straightforward. They've given us moles, 0.294 moles of solute, sodium nitrate, divided by 0 0.40 liters, or moles per liter. And so we just divide these two and we're moving on. So the molarity of this solution would be 0.735 with that capital M. Let's try another example. What volume in milliliters of a 1.15 molar potassium sulfate solution can be prepared using 75 grams of potassium sulfate? Okay, so it looks like we're going to look for a volume in milliliters. They've given us molarity, and they've also given us a mass. So I know if I see molarity, it's moles over liters. Um, that capital M could go here on the left. Can I plug in 75 grams directly in there? No, I can't. It has to be in moles. But I hopefully remember how to convert mass to moles. So this is going to our periodic table to add up two potassiums, a sulfur, and four oxygens. So that molar mass ends up being 174.2, and so that's equivalent to 0 0.430 moles. Now that number can plug in to the top. And then it looks like we have the M, we have um, the moles, and we can solve for the volume. So I'm going to switch colors real fast and substitute things in, 1.15 molar is equal to 0 0.430 moles over the volume that we're looking for. Um, so now it's just kind of your preference on how you rearrange things. We can get L out from the bottom, then isolate the variable by dividing 1.15 on both sides. So to know the liters of this solution would be 0.430 divided by 1.15, which is equal to 0 0.374 liters. And if you're rushing, you might think you're done, 
But remember, they want that final answer specifically in milliliters. So we just got to remember our metric system and take that answer and do a one-step liters to milliliters. We know that there are 1,000 milliliters in one liter, and so that's equivalent to 374 milliliters. That would be the volume of that total solution if that was the molarity, and that's how many grams of solute were present. Okay, let's try one more problem with molarity calcs. In example number three, what is the mass of sodium chloride required to make 500 milliliters of a 0.35 molar solution? So they've given us a molarity. They've given us a volume. And they're looking for a mass. Well, we know mass is measured in grams. And so molarity is specifically moles of solute over total liters of solution. I have one number I can plug in on the left, 0 0.350 molar. Looks like I don't have anything for the top, and then I need liters on the bottom. And so 500 milliliters is at least in the same family. We can just say there's 1,000 milliliters to one liter, so that converts to 0.5 of a liter. And so using algebra, if anything's over 1, you can cross multiply and divide. So that ends up being 0 0.350 times 0.5 to figure out how many moles are present, which ends up being 0.175 moles. And then just always go back and check, is that the final answer? The, Ultimately said they want to know mass in grams. So bringing back mole calcs, and I'll switch colors, we're going to convert our moles of sodium chloride, which is NaCl, it's a one-to-one -one ratio. If we had one mole of sodium chloride, the periodic table tells us how many grams that would be equivalent to. So if you add up 22.99 and 35.45, that molar mass is 58.44. Multiply that by 0.175 of a mole, and there would be 10.2 grams of NaCl present in a solution with those numbers. Okay, now we're going to move kind of into part two of today, talking about dilutions. And so if you have a lemonade that is just too concentrated, there's too much solute, too much lemonade powder, how, what's the kind of the easiest way to dilute it, to bring that down? And I hope we could all agree that adding water is probably the fastest way. Um, I guess technically you could boil off the water and scoop out some of that powder, but who has time for that? It's typically easier to just boil off, sorry, not boil off the water. It's typically easier just to add more water. And so something to note is that we are adding more solvent, but the solute, the powder, what's being dissolved, remains the same. So dilutions are all about adding water to bring down the molarity, to bring down the concentration. So there is another formula, a dilution formula, that allows us to calculate the new molarity once we've added water to our dilution. And because we mentioned earlier, the moles of solute is staying the same because all we're doing is adding water. Mathematically, you can see if you've made the denominator bigger that that molarity is going to be going down. Then we can do a little substitution. If the moles are the same in the original molarity and the second molarity, then we can equal molarity and volume to each other. So the dilution formula we want you to write down is M1V1 equals M2V2. And this should sound pretty familiar to our gas law, P1V1 equals P2V2. And so M stands for molarity, V stands for volume, and the ones just indicate the original molarity and the original volume. And then the twos is what's the new molarity and the new total volume. And I'll explain kind of why I stress total in a little bit. Um, Good thing about this formula is it's not as picky as our molarity formula, which demanded moles and liters. This one, your volume, as long as it's the same unit throughout, like milliliters and milliliters or liters and liters, it's 
it's not like picky. So either just as long as they're consistent, you're good to go with your volume units. Another really helpful formula to remember in dilutions is remember we are adding water to the original solution. So that's what makes up V2. We're going to work some problems where they're going to ask specifically about how much water was added. And so if you rearrange this, V2 minus V1 indicates the volume of water that was added to a dilution. So keep that in your back pocket um, when we work with problems looking for specific water amounts. Okay, let's practice a couple dilution problems. Just as a tip first off is in dilution problems, you're going to see multiple numbers. First, like molarity, there was only ever like two. And so really make sure you try to label your original molarities and your new molarities, etc. And then the other tip is when you see the word of, that is typically connecting a volume and a molarity, keeping those two things together. Otherwise, it can get confusing of what goes with what. So example number one says, what is the new molarity if 250 milliliters of a 0.5 molar sodium hydroxide solution is diluted to one and a half liters? So new molarity is M2, original volume V1, original molarity is M1, and our new total volume is one and a half liters. So you have two molarities, so in case you weren't sure what formula to use, if you ever have like two volumes or two molarities, you want to be using your dilution formula. M1, V1 equals M2, V2. Plug everything in. You have a 0.5 molar solution. Original volume of 250 milliliters. We're looking for our new molarity. And our total volume is 1.5 liters. Okay. Now, as I was writing 1.5 liters, I realized there's milliliters and there's liters, and they those don't match. So you have to switch something. So because I already have 250 down, I'm just going to convert one and a half liters. I know if I have a liter, I have a 1,000 milliliters. And so one, two, that switches me to 1,500 milliliters. And then I'm just going to apply math. I want to solve for our unknown and isolate that variable. So I'm going to divide each side by 1,500 milliliters. My units are going to cancel, so my final answer will be in molarity. And so I'll multiply the top, 0.5 times 250, divided by 1,500. And the new molarity, I'm going to write it over here, is 0 0.083. Three, and I'm going to use two sig figs because that one and a half liters is my least number of sig figs. And then before I move on, let's just check, does this make sense? Our original molarity was 0.5. We added a ton of water. And so my new molarity is a lower number. And that should always be true. Your M2 should be less than your M1 because you have added water. And then the same thing, your V2 will always be a bigger number than your V1 because the only difference is water being added. So speaking of water, let's try example number two. It says what volume in milliliters of water must be added to 12 and a half milliliters of concentrated hydrochloric acid that's 12 molar to make a 0.25 molar solution? So just like percent by mass, anytime you have a problem asking you specifically about an amount of water, it's going to be two steps, or you just need to be really careful with what you're doing. And then go ahead and label my original volume, my original molarity, and then we're bringing the molarity way down. And so that's typical that like this is called a stock solution, something really concentrated, and all we need is a little bit with lots of water, and then we can dilute things down. Okay, so I'm going to start by using our molarity formula because I see we have two molarities. So M1V1 equals M2V2. Our original molarity is 12. Our volume is 12.5 milliliters. We have a new molarity of 0.250 and we are looking for our new V2, at least step one is. So isolate V2 by dividing 0.25 by both sides, 
And so 12 times 12.5 divided by 0 0.250 gives us the V2 of 600 milliliters. And now some of you guys are going to stop there, box it, and you're not going to get all of your points on that problem if this were a test or learning check. Remember that V2 is a total. And so to know specifically about the water, that's you can apply another formula. That would be V2 minus V1 is the amount of water. So the only difference between the two volumes is water. So if our new volume was 600 milliliters and we originally had 12 and a half milliliters, then our difference would be, I didn't do that right, 600 minus 12.5 is 587.5. And then look back up for sig figs. Looks like everything is three sig figs. So one, two, three. That five will round the seven up to 588 milliliters of water. That's what was added for this dilution. And this also concludes this video.